So you just said there are basically four 12 volt batteries here. Yes. Why didn't you just do four Battleborns and then another four up top here? It's about 21 of the standard Battleborn batteries. 21? Yeah, just shy of 21 in these three batteries you see here. I can run all three air conditioners about six hours. Wow. Hey guys, Brian from 5 to go back again with Ben, with the uh, the huge New Horizons Majestic. And uh, we are on episode three of this little mini series of all of the uh, mods and stuff that he's done to this thing. Uh, we have talked about storage, we've talked about water filtration, and we've talked about internet. And now we're going deep. We're gonna talk about electrical systems. So in the previous episode, we did see the solar panels that are up top, but there is, um, there's a lot going on down here, guys. So uh, this is gonna be the Ben Show. Because <laughs> I don't know how 80% of this stuff works. So I'm just gonna aim this at this guy and he's gonna walk us through all of this. And we're gonna start up here under the nose where normally there'd be a generator, right? Most fifth wheels, you'll have most, a generator up in here. Most fifth wheels have a generator. New Horizons stopped doing that a while ago. Oh, okay. Um, they actually build a rack right below, behind the, the rear, rear axle. axle. Um, for generators, okay. it, it tends to be more stable. It's away from where people are generally sleeping. Yeah, that's a good. Um, yeah, I didn't think about that. It gets know, less weight on the pin too. Yeah, it's, and it's less weight. It actually helps counter the weight on the pin. Yeah. So it, they say it's more work to get under there and frame it and build it and do yeah. all that, which I can understand. It yeah. totally is, but it's definitely a, a better solution. Okay, so instead of a generator, because there's something you see down here that I've never seen in any other RV. So, uh, just, <laughs> let's just preface this with, this is only half of them. Yeah, here, I'll, I'll give you a quick... Yeah, there's a there's, whole other There's back. the other half. The battery you see here is the same exact battery you see down below. All right. so, so, we can focus there and know that there's just two of them. Alright, and shout out to Doggo from yes. the Discord server. Yes. Uh, Eric, right? Eric is his name, yes. Eric is amazing. And, he is uh, awesome. You went to his house and uh, he helped you install all of this, right? Yes, he actually designed the battery system completely, um, and then helped me install it, him and a couple friends of his. Let's just kind of go component by component here. Yes. Uh, what in the world is going on? So first off here, we have the battery banks. Uh, again, there's a second one up here. These are 48 volt, this is a 48 volt system. The reason we've done this is because it allows us to use much smaller cable. The cable um, that you would use on a 12 volt battery would be much larger than this. Yeah. I mean, really, it's just, or, I mean, to, to, to counter the amount of current that you would use at 12 volts here, you would probably need four aught and more than one of them oh here. This is two aught cable. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're in a much better spot here. This cable is less expensive, it's less heavy, um, easier to work with, yeah. right? I would not necessarily say go 48 volt because there's a lot of uh, other challenges yeah. along with 48 volt. But 24 is a very uh, nice, sweet spot for a lot of people. Okay. Uh, and it's not hard to do. Uh, you just have to plan ahead because yeah. some of the equipment you have can do multiple voltages. Some equipment, like the inverter chargers, are very specific. Okay. They either work on 12 or they work on 24 or they work on 48. Okay. So you just have to consider that. So is this technically one battery? <clears throat> this here is technically one battery. Holy cow. So for every, every there are 16 cells here. These mm -hmm. are actually... These are actually individual cells. Each one of them here is about 3.3 volts. Okay. So as you, this, this set of four here is a 12 volt battery, essentially. Mm -hmm. This is a 12 volt battery, 12 volt battery, 12 volt battery, and you're up to 48. Okay, so a question I know it, that's gonna pop up in the uh, comments. So you just said there are basically four 12 volt batteries here. Yes. Why didn't you just do four Battleborns and then another four up top here? So what we have here between this battery, that battery, and the, as of yet mentioned, 12 volt battery in the case back here, mm -hmm. which is just another four of these. A custom built 12 it's volt battery. It's a custom yeah. built 12 volt battery. It's four of these and the BMS and you know a couple other safety things um, in there um, is 2,070 amp hours equivalent at 12 volts. For so all of these? For all three of these, yeah, because okay. it's obviously a 48 volt battery, so you measure it differently. Okay. Uh, it's about 26 kilowatt hours worth of battery okay. power now, storage. So if you had eight Battleborns <clears throat> in here. It's about 21 of the standard Battleborn batteries. 21? Yeah, just shy of 21 
in these three batteries you see here. Holy and you know how big they are. They're, they're huge. They're, they're the size of like a car battery, right? Wow. Roughly. So 21 of those. It's New Horizons builds a battery rack for this, Jeez. for Battleborns. Mm -hmm. It can hold eight of them. Yeah. And that's their solution for lithium. Is now, do you think do you think weight wise, like just sheer weight, would those be about equivalent? So, would eight battleborns be about the weight of this, or is this? Uh, I think you're almost the same on okay. on on a lot of that. I, I'm not a hundred percent sure on the weight. What I do, if I remember correctly, between the inverters, which are huge, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'll see those in a minute. Yeah. The batteries and everything, we're talking, I want to say it was around 800 pounds. For the whole for, for that, okay. Yeah, for that for that stuff. Okay. Now, I, can't, I can't believe how many batteries that is. Yeah, like it, it's the, it is the equivalent is. of your of your 100 amp hour standard Battleborn battery that you see all over YouTube. Yep. Right? It is 21 of those. Just, <laughs> just shy of 21 of those. 20, 20.7. Can't imagine what twenty one of those would weigh. Uh, <clears throat> it's a lot, and and yeah. it's a lot, and that's the thing is, is that Battleborn, um, they make a great product. They stand by their product. It's a great company from everything that I've heard and mm -hmm. everyone I've worked with. So each one of those twenty one Battleborn batteries has its own BMS hardware in it, which mm -hmm. is a battery management system, which is what this red thing is that here. Thing, okay. I have three of them. Mm -hmm. One in there, one there, and one there. Uh -huh. Battleborn. In that chassis, and if you had 21, you would have 21 of those. Right. <laughs> so it's it's all the more components, right? Yeah, yeah. So by breaking this down, yes, it's a lot more work to do this. Um, no, I did not know how to do this myself. Yes, I I, I got the services of a electrical a professional engineer. battery builder. <laughs> yes, uh, Eric, aforementioned Eric, he uh, works for a company that designs lithium batteries yeah. so he knows what he's doing he's done this for many many years and he's very good at it okay so the batteries are the blue stuff yes all you said these are uh buses Did yeah so most of okay. this here is bus bars mm -hmm. bus bars and shunts and cables we're gonna have to make a joke about this we're both breaking our backs crouching down under here so now we're uh, we're gonna get some chairs oh that's so much better oh yeah it's yep okay i so. feel my feet again Shunts and uh, yes. buses. So shunts, what they do is they allow you to measure the amount of current going through them. That's, okay. This is really their primary goal. It's for monitoring. It's for monitoring. Okay. It's for, yeah, to, to send the current through. So what we find is a very um, prevalent um, issue or problem is people look at the little control panel in their RV that mm -hmm. it says your battery is, you know, four dots, you know, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. That's based on voltage. Voltage is not a good measurement of what your battery's capacity actually is, what your state of charge of the battery is. Yeah, because when I go hit mine, it says you have like 12.9 volts. And I'm like, I don't know what that's for. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it doesn't matter because in order for you to, so, so voltage is at best a poor guess as to what this, the state of charge of a battery is. And by state of charge, I mean 50%, 75%, yeah, 100%, yeah. right? Um, it's a bad, it's a bad way to measure it anyway, but in order for it to even be a bad way to measure it, you have to let the battery sit idle for about two or three hours before you take that measurement. Hmm. Batteries never sit idle, yeah. especially in an RV. They're either, you're either pulling from your lights, you're pulling, or you're putting something in from a charger or what have you. The only way to get an accurate state of charge for a battery is to actually measure the amount of current that comes out of it or goes into it. Mm -hmm. And we use a shunt to do that. Okay. So what you'll see here is the only thing besides the BMS, which is a safety, you know, management system for the batteries itself mm -hmm. that cuts off power at certain temperatures and, and stuff like that and manages the, the batteries themselves. The only thing, the next thing connected to it on the negative bus is the shunt. Okay. So all power that flows oh, yeah. out of the battery. Literally right yes, there. Literally there. Straight into there. Okay. <clears throat> that power flows out of the battery, it's measured by the shunt. If it flows into the battery, it's measured by the shunt. When the battery stops taking a charge, the shunt will know that it's at 100%. You okay. also have to configure the shunt to, to the parameters of the battery so it knows how many amp hours and it knows a bunch of different things. Okay. As once you get to 100%, if you start draining it, it actually is counting the amount of current that 
leaves the battery and mm. it knows how big the battery is. So then it knows when the battery's depleted. Okay. That's how you get that information. Because I have two 48 volt batteries, essentially, mm -hmm. I have a shunt for each of them okay. because I want to know what's happening on this particular 12 volt battery versus this one up here, mm -hmm. lower, upper. So there's a shunt there. You can't see the shunt for the upper one that's mounted up above. Um, these cables off the BMS are yep. very short and I don't want to make them longer. And nicely labeled, lower yes. 48 volt, yep. 48 volt primary bus, solar and lots yep. and lots of labels. That's great. Yes, I like labels. <laughs> I'm using the Victron Serbo GX along with their VRM dashboard to track all this data and monitor everything. The Serbo and that whole platform requires that a single shunt be used to measure the battery and show the state of charge. Okay. So what I have done is I've added a combined 48 volt shunt. I was wondering why there were so many wires <clears throat> on that. Yes. So the battery, so the shunt from the upper and the lower go into the combined mm -hmm. and then out from the combined to the system. Okay. So the combined is my, is my full state of charge in the dashboard. Gotcha. Um, I can see the state of charge of each of the individual batteries below that. Um, that's more for me, just so I know if they're being used evenly, if I need to diagnose something there. Um, because they should try to be used fairly at the same time. Gotcha. Right? Um, so what, are, what do all the buses do? <clears throat> so the buses, they are just a means of connecting things. Okay. Um, and you have a lot of things in here. And a lot of things connected. <laughs> I took this to a level where I wanted to uh, make sure that I used, with few exceptions, only one thing on a terminal, okay. on, a, on a terminal stud. So, you, so you, don't have like, stud. you don't have one screw with like, with four, like things four things clamped things on onto it. it. Right, okay. yeah. which you can do in yeah. some in some cases. Um, the thing is, is if I need to service something, yeah. I don't have to disconnect the one thing that I need, right? Mm -hmm. And you're gonna get better connections when you do that. Yep. So the only exceptions I'd say here is like right over here, I have, a couple of the shunts connected on one mm -hmm. to that's you know this this other bus up here it works it's fine that's never going to be disconnected these don't need to be disconnected right. they're, they're powering the monitoring system um, <clears throat> so i just kind of went with that because otherwise it's really hard to find i have a fourth shunt right here this measures dc current that is not um, going to or from the inverters. Okay. So anything else on the 48 volt system that is not part of, that's not going to or from the inverters. Um, so that's things like my converter to the 12 volt system mm -hmm. um, because your RV, everything in the RV that's not running on, you know, 120 standard residential power, mm -hmm. um, which is what the inverters create or shore power has, yep. um, runs on 12 volts. Your lights, the toilets, which are macerator toilets, so those run on that. Um, fans, fans lights, yeah. furnace, yep. the thermostats, you know, all the all those control systems, everything like that is all 12 volt. Now I don't want to go through and try to replace all those with 48 volt lights or deal with that. Right, that would be that just that'd be insane. Yeah. You you keep a 12 volt system. So that's why we have the 12 volt battery back here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Also my you know the Bigfoot legs. Yeah. Um, you know, the slide yeah, pumps every, and like motors, everything. More is 12 volt than e you yeah, think. Everything yeah. is 12 volt, yeah. Um, so we have the 12 volt battery, uh, and then I have a converter that you, you probably can't, you might be able to kind of see, we'll but see it we'll see it on the other side. Yep. Um, it converts 48 volt DC to 12 volt DC. Okay. So that creates, that, that sits over here. So I can measure the amount of current I'm pulling on the DC side with this shunt here, because everything else that pulls is, 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 is over here on this side of the shunt. Gotcha. So that's not a conventional battery monitoring shunt, that's just showing me power flow so that I know more. And then you said everything down here is replicated again above, although I do see uh, all, some all bus of, stuff. All, the all bus of stuff the bus here. stuff is down here. Okay. All the bus stuff's down here. But the, you've got the, the battery, the BMS. Yeah, the battery, the BMS, and, there's another and shunt this rack, there. and one shunt for okay. that battery is up in this here. It is, um, there's a shelf that yeah. only fits so much. Yep. Uh, there's a buddy plug on this RV. <laughs> yeah, look at this. And this, uh, that is my RV plugged in right there. See, uh, follow the cord. Yeah. There's my rig oh, on the other side of this huge pin box. pin box. There we go. Yeah. So I'm actually using 30 amp service off of Ben's RV. Yes. Which is crazy. I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> yep. 
All right, last thing before we head inside, you do have solar panels up top. We do have solar panels up top. I see a solar charger. Yep, we have a solar charge controller up there. I have built this, comes into here, negative uh, and positive over here. By the way, that's the difference between the black and the red, in case you weren't aware. The black is all the negative side. Yep. The red is the positive side. Wait, so you don't have black cables with just red tape on the ends? Correct, <laughs> correct. Uh, I, I was very meticulous about that. I did not do that. Um, <laughs> the other thing here is that all of the bus bars you see over here on this uh, vertical wall uh -huh. here are all the 48 volt system. Okay. And everything up there oh. is the 12 volt stuff. Okay. So, yeah. There's two separate systems, and so I kept them on separate boards, essentially. Right. Um, and how much solar do you have up top? I have 1,920 watts of peak solar potential okay. up there. There were six, six panels? panels. Okay. Yeah, they're 320 watts each. Awesome. Um, I would like to add a lot more. <laughs> uh, it's going to require some creative engineering uh -huh. in that I'm probably going to have to figure out a way to put some wings or something on top, <laughs> slide I've out heard, panels. Uh, yeah, I've heard mention of wings on Discord. <laughs> um, that's going to be a project for a much further down the road because mm -hmm. weight wise yeah. it's it's definitely gonna push us into new truck that's, territory that's tricky yep. um and it's a lot of engineering and I, you know frankly i don't have time for it right yeah. now i mean you don't have slide toppers you could <laughs> i don't have slide toppers <laughs> yeah there's a lot of options up there yeah. i would like to uh expand my solar because i would like to be able to use it um and to be able to use it more yeah you know I, the more free free power, I mean, it's not right. free. Yeah. It costs money to build all this. <laughs> Although, to be fair, you can get into a solar system for uh, fairly inexpensive. Yeah. Overall, the solar it's, is actually one of the, the least the expensive parts of the actual build. Yeah. You can get used panels from a, from some places. Um, head over to Discord. We can talk about that in more detail. Yeah. Um, the the charge controllers are reasonable expen you know reasonably expensive. Uh, I want to say this this one here, is, it's actually a pretty beefy one, mm -hmm. the 150 70. Um, and I want to say it was in like the six seven hundred dollar range, somewhere in there. Um, but there are much smaller ones that you can use and yeah. get into that are far less. Um, also, there are other brands, but frankly, Victron is the gold standard, and that is what I've chosen to use for everything. Um, well, let's, let's go in and... Uh... Let's go in and look at those. That's then. a great place to cut over to the inside. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about today's sponsor, Snap Pads. They are a fantastic tool that lets you permanently attach a big, chunky, heavy-duty rubber pad to the bottom of leveling legs. They give you more surface area that keeps you from sinking. It gives you a little bit more grip, keeps you from sliding, and you don't have to carry around more blocks and all sorts of stuff. And also, fifth wheels, the, the legs tend to be out a little bit so you can access them, but with motorhomes, they've tucked those suckers way under there. So if you have blocks that you're putting under there, you're basically crawling on the ground every time you want to put the blocks in or pull them back out. If you go to their website at the URL below and enter in this promo code 52GO10, that's the number two and the number 10, you'll get 10% off. And if you're like us and you have the absolute largest feet that they support and you get the absolute most expensive set, that 10% is going to be nice. So go to their website, do 52GO10 to get 10% off, and you too can have awesome snap pads that we love, and you'll love them too. Ben, we're back inside. We are back <laughs> inside. This is the toolbox. Yep. If you've seen the previous two episodes, uh, all of this has been talked about. Um, but opposite the toolbox here, I am facing forward um, to the nose of the rig. Uh, this is where the magic happens. So uh, let's, let's do a little walkthrough of this uh, very expensive broom holder. Yes, the main stars of the show, uh, you see besides the battery, are the Victron Quattro inverters. Yes, two inverters. Yeah. They are each 10,000 VA. It only requires 6,000 VA to power one side of your 50 amp panel. So 12,000 total, if you can do the math, You'll notice I have 20,000. Yeah. That's significantly oversized. The thing is, is that when these get warmer, they actually will derate themselves lower. So even if they're 
cooking pretty hard in here, which, you know, they were over the summer yeah. before we got the fan and everything. They should power the entire panel. Maxed out. Now, I don't think I'm actually capable of maxing out the entire panel. Right. Even with four, <laughs> with the three air conditioners, um, you know, you didn't hit the microwave. I mean, I, I've tried to, to amp it up, and I think I've amped it up to like 7,000, you know, something Jeez. like that. Um, That's not even close. You really, <clears throat> you really can do it do a number on it if you're actually charging the batteries. These units here are both inverters and they are chargers. So they will take shore power and they will charge the 48 volt batteries. Mm -hmm. They will take power from the 48 volt batteries and the solar, because that comes in on 48 volts as well, and they will create 120 volt AC to power all of my residential appliances, my right. computer, refrigerator, my refrigerator, which yep. is a residential fridge. Yep. Uh, the, all the outlets, <clears throat> the outlets, the cooktop, the television, mm -hmm. everything in the AV cabinet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, these things can switch over from shore power to battery in very few milliseconds to the point where, uh, they function a lot like a UPS. Oh, wow. Uh, computers don't shut off. Nothing shuts off. Hmm. Um, you don't even get a blinky time on your microwave? Even, uh, <laughs> the only time I get a blinky time on the microwave is when I have to reconfigure something on there and okay. it requires a reset, gotcha. uh, which is pretty rare. So we can just unplug the power and, and we do. We don't turn computers off. We don't turn, I mean, this is home and when, we're, when we get in, it's fine. I mean, I'll turn the air conditioners off because mm -hmm. they use a, quite a bit of power um, <clears throat> to give an idea of the capacity of this system and the capability of these inverters, I can run all three air conditioners. They're all 15,000 BTU mm -hmm. Coleman Mach 8s, I think they are. Um, I can run all three of those with the compressors on about six hours. Wow. Uh, that's an estimate I've gotten, I've done about three hours in and I was about 50%. So, um, and that's also with everything else baseline running that yeah. I call. So, you, you know, the computer's running. To, I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't trying to conserve power to just show how much I got the air conditioner running. Mm -hmm. What we found with boondocking is that we can easily get through the night with the batteries running, not trying to really conserve anything. Yep. Um, you come around the next day. And the solar helps. The solar can basically handle your baseline as long as you're not running air conditioners, but it also can't really charge the batteries. So then you get to the next night, and then you're like, okay, you can't make it through the next night. Yeah. Battery storage can obviously can store power, but it doesn't magically give you power. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you, at somewhere. some point, the power has to come from somewhere yep. uh, in order to replenish what you have. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really the, the the gist of it and more solar will give me that ability uh, also the ability to offset my actual grid usage actively mm -hmm. by the solar is really helpful so i can anything that's coming in on the sun right now actually reduces the amount of power i am pulling from the grid right to circle back again for a second to the buddy plug mm -hmm. this inverter here is handling it it's a 30 amp plug so um, I didn't, I don't need, only needed one inverter to handle that. So I found which inverter seems to use less power overall, mm -hmm. uh, because Victron's really great about storing all that data. So I was able to pull graphs and I could see where peaks and, and everything were. And this one seemed to be working just a little bit less overall based on what's on it. And so I chose to hook the buddy plug up to it. Um, uh, I've done the math. If this thing is not derated, um, I could use all 50 amps on the panel and all 30 amps on the buddy plug, and this thing could <laughs> still do it. Good lord, that's a lot of inverter talk, and there's a lot more stuff. There is a lot more up stuff there. So you want to go left to right? <laughs> sure, I'll go all left right. to right. We'll go all the way over here. All the way over here. So what is that? This is the 48 volt to 12 volt converter. Okay. So it, can, it creates 12 volt power from 48 volt power. We talked about that earlier. That's how we get these 48 volt batteries to create 12 volt power. Um, that's how that 12 volt battery gets charged okay. because. And this is that custom battery. That is the that custom 12 volt battery. Yep. Yes. Okay. So the shore power comes into these units. I mean, it comes into this. It comes into the surge protector, which is mounted up here. You can't really see it. Yeah. 
and then it goes into this box where it breaks out into these two units that it comes back in and then it goes into the panel. Okay. In order to get from 48 volts to 12 volts, you need some kind of mechanism. The most efficient option that I have is that charger. Okay. It could give me 30 amps of 12 volt power. Uh, you may notice that that board is very large for what it is. Mm -hmm. I have a plan to put a second one there to give me some extra power. Okay. Um, because when I am driving the Bigfoot legs, for example, or yeah. the slides, yeah. the Bigfoot legs are rated up to 120 amps, which that thing can't do. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, heck, the Macerator toilets are rated at 30 amps. So that pretty much maxes yeah. that thing out if you flush the toilet, which is hilarious. <laughs> um, so that's what the battery really is for. Mm -hmm. You could get away without a battery. You would just need, I would need like four of those, ah. if not maybe more. You can parallel as many of them as you need mm -hmm. to, to, to do it, and, they, and that works. It's a totally valid way to do that. Um, what I find right now, this works. What I find is that if I have to drain the 12 volt battery, which I can do, I can turn the converter off and I can run all the 12 volt stuff right off the battery. Mm -hmm. And the battery's got 230 amp hours of capacity. It's not it. a small battery. It's not a small battery. Because that battery has so much capacity, I can stop using my 48 volt battery if we're off power. Mm -hmm. I can let my 48 volt battery run the inverters completely and not the converter to charge a full battery. And I can let that charge that, or you know, I can let that battery handle that. That battery can run the lights and everything like that, you know, on average for like, I, I would say at least two days. Jeez. But once you start to drain that battery, now you have to charge it again. Remember, right. the power has to come from somewhere. Yep. So when I turn that controller back on, it's only 30 amps, and it takes forever to charge that battery. Gotcha. So a second one of those will help me recover faster. Okay. And that's, and that's really the deal there. All right, so moving over, I see uh, <coughs> a big thing labeled converter disconnect. Control, converter disconnect. Yep. That is uh, a bunch of circuit breakers for the uh, converter that we just talked about. Okay. Two of them are for the one that are there. Two of them that are off are for the one that will be there soon. For future one. Future okay. one. I, I just rewired the whole thing, so I figured why not add the right size thing and I'll have to replace it later. Yeah, plan for it. <clears throat> awesome. Uh, so above that, we've got a thing labeled Bigfoot Power. Yes. And you showed me that earlier. So you basically have a, a remote key fob to turn your leveling system on and off. Right. So the leveling system itself, like the pumps and everything, are on their own direct power. It's a mm -hmm. lot bigger than the wiring you see there. What that is is for the control system, the control panel and the brain of the thing that controls the legs. Mm -hmm. So that is outside behind a door with everybody's favorite key that every RVer owns, <laughs> a CH751. Uh -huh. So what's the point? Yep. Um, because... I don't want someone with a key and some nefarious intentions to come try to mess with my leveling legs. Uh, we cut the power to the control panel. When we're not using it, it's off. Yep. And you can't touch the legs. And and the you only turn, way it to on, turn it on. I can just turn it on. Yep. I just heard a click. It doesn't do anything in here, but outside no. you installed a light. I installed a little LED to yep. let me know when the power is on, just for for that. But you can't mess with it unless you have access to our storage, right. which has much better keys. And you said there was a manual switch. It was just <laughs> yeah, yeah. New Horizons actually came through. up with the idea, yeah. that, and they put uh, just a regular RV flip switch on there. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to have to be reaching in here on travel day when yeah. I was trying to. I mean, you'd have to climb in here. To, there's no real good place to put it. Um, so I used one of these relay boxes. Uh, you may remember that from the Imagine video. Mm -hmm. I had the same exact box I used for the cap lights so that I can control those from my truck. Yeah, very cool. Or inside. All right, so next over we've got basement front lights. I, yep. I'm pretty sure that just turns lights on and off. Yes, it just turns these lights on and I off. I got it. I'm learning <laughs> things, Ben. All right, next we got a 30 amp buddy plug. That looks like just a fuse for that what is I'm a, plugging to. That right? is a surge or that is a circuit breaker for the electrical outlet that Brian's rig is plugged into. All right. Uh, so next over, you said all of the incoming shore power goes into that. Yeah, all the big junction all the, the six three wiring that comes from the surge protector down to the quattros because it has to split mm -hmm. and then it has to come back together. It's all in that junction box. Okay, so that's 50 amp AC. Why yep. is there a 30 amp AC as well? Uh, because this is where the generator wiring comes in. I do uh, not okay. have a generator yet because they were like backlogged by like a year. Okay. So we have not actually gotten an onboard generator. I have a portable one that I use. Mm -hmm. So in, in the efforts to clean up the wiring, I brought the wiring into this box. Gotcha. Nothing else goes in here yet. 
Okay. <clears throat> and then next over we have a little blue thing. This is the Serbo. This is the brains of the operation in terms of um, all of the power systems. The Serbo GX, it connects to the internet uh, via Ethernet. It connects to all of the equipment. So it connects to each of the five shunts. Um, it connects to the solar controller. It connects to the quattros. Mm -hmm. And it manages all of that data. So it knows, and, it, and it's the brains of the operation. It knows how much power is being used here. It knows how much to pull from the solar. It knows you know, when the solar is actually performing. It, it, it synchronizes the charging capacities and, and everything so that everything is all in sync and together. And then it takes all that data and it uploads it to Victron's VRM dashboard where I can see it on my phone. So it shows all of this data so you can see shore power incoming, AC loads, battery status, solar, and DC power. Very cool. Yep. All right, and next to that is just a <clears throat> USB power It's hub, just right? a USB hub because this unit only has three USB ports on it, and uh -huh. I have five shunts and the um, solar charge controller. I have built this system so that I have room for two more solar charge controllers. Uh, for the future solar expansion, gotcha. um, so I needed ports to which to connect all of this yep. stuff, and there just there wasn't enough. All right, and then over here, I'm gonna move the broom so you guys can actually <laughs> see it. All right. all right, so over here we have a thing. This is solar, solar disconnect. disconnect. It's a very similar box. I mean, it's the exact same box, mm -hmm. but it allows me to um, the the yellow is the only solar that's actually functioning right now. It's the there are three sets of wires going up to the roof mm -hmm. uh, into that junction box up there. Um, labeled yellow, red, and blue. So if I cut that off, then there's no solar power. Oh. So it's just it's a safety cutoff. Okay. Um, and then red and blue again is just red and blue are just unused, and they'll be used in the future. So I okay. will probably put two more solar charge controllers here and here. Oh, you got tons of room over there. Yeah, that's that's the whole point of this area. Wow. Uh, there are these. You might see these little white boxes here. There's one down down here. Mm -hmm. These are um, just waterproof boxes for a balance board for the batteries. So that keeps all those 16 cells in balance with each other. Gotcha. Um, that's the other thing that you would not have if you had a bunch of standalone Battleborn batteries. Mm -hmm. um, again, talking about like the 20 or 21 that we, you know, you would have or whatever, any number of them, they are all independent batteries and they mm -hmm. are not aware of each other in that regard. So you can actually, over time, if you have, especially if you have large banks and you don't have things wired correctly, you can have some of the batteries have lower voltages mm -hmm. and that can cause issues on your system. Hmm. Um, because I have control of the whole system here, the balancing board is just a little board like this with a bunch of wires connected to it. Yeah. Um, Was that all the wires running across? Yeah, the top it's all, of the yeah all the wires ah. coming across that is. Um, so half of them are for the balance board, uh -huh. half of them are for the BMS so that it can measure the voltages on the cells. Gotcha. Okay. So I can actually see the voltages on each one of those. The BMS itself has a small balancing mechanism in it, um, but the, the dedicated board just does a much better job. So in our hypothetical <laughs> 21 plus Battleborn setup, you would need something else to manage there's... the balance between all those cells. So you couldn't do something like that. There have Correct. to be something else. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You would need some kind of. I, I want to say th there are things out there that do that. Mm -hmm. um, Dick John probably makes one. I haven't needed to research it, so I don't, I don't really know the gotcha. actual details on that. Hmm. All right, guys. Uh, that's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> ben says he's not an electrical engineer. I am uh, not an electrical engineer. I but have he, no uh, degrees in electrical engineering. <laughs> but he did confess to me before we started recording that um, he is uh, of the mentality that if he's going to get into something, he's going to dive all the way in, learn how all of it works. And I think that shows, because this is crazy. And I know many other people have worked on this as well, but this is definitely his brainchild. So it's, uh, it's a lot. So again, Discord. If you have mm -hmm. questions about any of this, hop into Discord. And just like with the internet video, uh, there is a RV Internet channel. There's also RV Internet Advanced. Electrical is the same way. Uh, actually, no, no there's just, just RV. There's electrical. one electrical. I just have it muted because I, I understand <laughs> because nothing electrical about it. <laughs> in general is advanced all yeah. by itself. Yeah. You know, just yep. just know that you know you're gonna have the mathematical symbols flying <laughs> at you. 
<laughs> when you're when you're in there, most likely. Yeah, yeah. We, so, we try to be nice, but you know, it's just know what you're getting into. It's a lot. There's a lot. But if you have any questions about any of this, um, whether you are like me and you're down at the like 101, 201 range, or if you're working on your doctorate or you know publishing your 30th article, uh, there is there are people in there who know all about this stuff. Um, if you have any questions about any of the specific equipment, like part numbers, how what talks to what, any of that, hop in Discord, and uh, I'm sure Ben will have all of this um, available if you ask the right questions. Um, so, again, Ben, thank you so much. Uh, this is very strange to be sitting inside the basement of an RV <laughs> filming three videos, uh, but that's how big this thing is. So... Go check out the other two videos. We've got a video all about all the storage stuff you see around us. There's also a video about all of the internet stuff over there and up on the roof. And uh, if you go back to earlier this year, we have a full tour of the inside of this huge, beautiful, custom New Horizons Majestic. Uh, so again, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you understood half of this, you are doing way better than I am. So <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, we will see you in the next episode. Have a good one. Bye.